So let's see. Let's be, let's do a little sound test here. I didn't know. Uh, it's uh, yeah the humming. So let's see. I have a different mic, and uh, I hadn't realized that this could be interactive with this whole chat uh, window. So maybe it's worthwhile getting the sound. We're still working on getting the sound right, and uh, so I guess you're part of the experiment. I see a big yes, much better. Oh, much better. Whoa. Okay. Okay, okay. That's enough. Thank you. So I will. We'll get started here, then. So um, we'll start all over again because uh, I, there's so many buttons here, and I also have to remember to push the audio dharma button so we have an audio recording of this. And um, okay. Okay, my friends. So we're going to sit to meditate. So taking an upright posture, except for those of you who are doing this uh, the upright metaphorically. Maybe you're laying down. The uprightness is not just physical, it's also a state of mind to be upright to be, have a certain strength, a certain dedication, to sit here, to be present, to be aware, with some intention, some sense of purpose, the purpose to be aware. And some strength in that, some uprightness that doesn't easily get swayed by the circumstances of things coming and going. And when we first sit down, it can be helpful to do something physical, to let our physical body be the support for becoming established here and now, in this body, at this place. And it could be how to actually move your body. You could sway back and forth a bit, maybe uh, wide arcs first, and then make the arcs go smaller, feeling yourself settling in on your sitting bones or setting in on the place. You could also uh, rock forward and back two or three times, mostly to see if you can, when you slow down, you can get yourself again established with a balanced weight on your sitting bones. So the weight of your body travels through your spine. And then also to have your body help you to arrive and connect to this moment it can be helpful to take deeper breaths, perhaps the deepest breaths you've taken this week. And if you take a deep breath in, then maybe a long exhale, maybe longer than you normally would, to really feel the body exhale, once or twice at the beginning. It can be nice to exhale so f- so long and full, fully, that you feel the body's longing to take an in-breath. The body has a deep instinct, deep ability to keep breathing. And then letting the body, the bre- let the breathing return to normal. And a little bit more subtle part of this starting ritual is to relax. Maybe starting around the forehead and temples. As you exhale, 
softening around the eyes. Softening the shoulders, feeling the pull of gravity. Maybe as you exhale, to let there be a softening in the chest and the area around the heart. Softening the belly. And then the next step in what today I'm calling the ritual of beginning is to directly and intentionally see if you can settle your body and settle your attention on the body's experience of breathing. Some people feel the movements of the belly, which has the advantage of being kind of a low center of gravity. And to compose ourselves, settle ourselves into the belly and feel the movements as we breathe. Some people are more pulled towards the movements of the chest. Perhaps feeling the center of the chest or any tenderness that's in the chest as you breathe. Feeling the movement, rhythm of that tenderness as you breathe in and out. Or the sensations of the air going in and out through the nostrils, upper lip. Perhaps feeling the coolness, the freshness of the air as you breathe in. The warmness as you breathe out. Settling into that refreshing, refreshment and comfort of warmness, perhaps. And some people will feel the whole breath body, feel the wide experience of the body breathing. The final little initial step in this beginning ritual is to do three breaths, counting to three each breath, and do so with a gentle, kind, wholeheartedness, as if you're abandoning yourself to just breathing for three breaths. And then after those three breaths,
See if your awareness of breathing can be receptive. And not so much that you're directing attention to breathing as it is that you are making space in the mind, in awareness, for the experience of breathing to reveal itself, to arise and pass. And perhaps just one inhale at a time, one exhale at a time. Being content to just allow the inhale to be known. To be content just allowing the exhale to be known in awareness. And being content with each inhale and exhale is that's, that's the only thing you have to be aware of. Just that, just inhale as you inhale, exhale as you exhale. No need to be concerned with breathing the right way or some special way of focusing on the breath except for being receptive, allowing, being aware of just how breath, breathing appears to you in all the variations, one breath to another. And if you have a lot of concerns, thoughts, it's okay. Let them recede a little bit into the background. You don't have to struggle against them. But maybe you can put breathing, allow breathing to be at the center of what you become aware of. And every time you could wander off in thought, open again to the experience of breathing. Allow it to come.
as we come to the end of this sitting, see if you can stay receptive in your awareness, curious about if you're just, if you don't try to do anything when you hear the bells, except stay aware, notice the shifts and changes that happen inside of you. What happens to your thinking, your feelings, your wishes to move. If you stay receptive and just noticing, what do you notice that changes as you hear the three bells ending the sitting? So thank you for that. So this is only the second week that I'm really figuring out how this YouTube works and this way of broadcasting and, and our little exchanges around the mics and the volume at the beginning was actually quite nice for me. It really began to break open the idea that, or dissolve the idea that uh, this whole medium is a little bit impersonal. Um, To see your responses and to feel your mutual support in figuring this out and feeling it somewhat interactive this way. Um, I just just felt delight and, and warmth and happiness to, even more so, to share this with all of you. So thank you. So then, <clears throat> so then to um, continue on this five-part series on effort in practice, especially in meditation practice. Uh, the first uh, week, first day was initiating effort. And then it was being able to discern uh, the appropriate places to put our effort, the right endeavor, and to put our life energy into those things which are supportive, helpful, freeing, uh, skillful, uh, and to avoid putting them into, put effort into, not to letting go of that which is unskillful, unhelpful. As we do this more, as we get a sense of how to navigate and what we put our effort into, how we put our effort, uh, what we focus on, um, this is part of meditation of our engagement and involvement with the present moment. And certainly it's possible to get busy trying to adjust everything all the time. But um, it's also, uh, if we really take this to heart and understand this discernment, this towards that which is helpful, supportive. At some point we realize that working too hard, straining, being busy, uh, trying to be too perfect in meditation is actually counterproductive. That uh, trying to do meditation perfectly, you only end up doing it imperfectly. Um, I like to think kind of, I don't have any, you know, it's not a hard and fast figure, but I kind of have this idea that um, it's kind of like um, uh, s- uh, meditation practice which is 60% good, whatever that is, um, is actually much better than meditation practice that we're trying to be a 90% good meditator, 100%. That uh, we want to give ourselves leeway and be relaxed about how things are and and not be troubled by how things are so that there can be a greater settling, a greater letting go, a greater uh, discovery of ease with what is. And of course there are difficulties as we meditate. 
and then and the effort can be, uh, how do we not be troubled by the difficulty? How do we not get reactive or constricted or tight or self-critical around the difficulties? And this effort, the effort to find how to be in a way that is more at ease and less reactive, less harsh, less heavy or, or you know, stressful, is this ongoing effort to kind of find our way. And so the right endeavoring is not a problem, but it's actually freeing, settling. And as we go along with this, uh, we find that uh, uh, to build up continuity of effort, continuity of kind of being engaged in the meditation, and it's nourishing to be engaged. It's settling. It's, it feels like the doors are opening to greater calm or peace or equanimity or just kind of just or greater kind of feeling like we're authentic or connected to what's real as opposed to fixing and manipulating and changing what's going on. And so the third kind of effort that I want to focus on today is, uh, could be called continuous effort but that might be sound again like a lot of work. Um, I, another way of talking about it is effort that is persistently relaxed, or re- or relaxed persistence. So a continuity of effort, where being at ease or relaxed is built into how we're aware, and then settling in and letting that be more continuous, and that builds naturally on its own. Every time we come back from the mind wandering off and settle back, settle back, that um, the the uh, the momentum of being lost in thought or being thinking begins to quiet down. It's like every time we start over again, we're decreasing the amount of fuel that keeps that active thinking going. The amount that we decrease it might be very small, imperceptible, but if we do it a hundred times in a session of meditation, um, it makes a difference. We slowly settle. If we come back to the present moment and then have a gentle dedication, let's just stay here, hang out here, let's try to be upright and have some strength and just be here with the experience. Not straining, not demanding, and not expecting to be successful even, but just a dedication or maybe a devotion. Let me hang here with this, let's be with it. And then we wander off and we start again. And over time, um, the idea is to cultivate and find a continuity. A lot of the deeper benefits of meditation practice have come when the effort to be present or the ability to be present um, has a continuity through time. Uh, And that not only is in meditation, formal meditation itself, but it's also in everyday life. That if we can have some semblance of some connection to being attentive, aware as we go through our day, Um, the continuity of awareness is kind of like a magnet for uh, beneficial states. It's a magnet for better understanding of ourselves and how to navigate and find ourselves. And it gives us a greater capacity to not uh, continue to fuel unhelpful unhelpful states. Uh, States that are maybe caught up in greed, hate, and delusion or where we collapse into fear. And uh, so, um, so this continuity of attention kind of uh, provides breathing room for our life. And that's greater space, greater connection to what's going on. And so that is, a, the direction is continuous effort. And, uh, you know, so at the beginning of getting into that, it takes a little bit of work, it takes remembering, it takes valuing it. And it, it, and it really is supported by feeling the goodness of it and appreciating it. If we just keep thinking it's work, and we keep thinking that, you know, I'm not doing a good job and we're critical of ourselves, it's not a very pleasant, inviting state for the mind to stay present in. But if we can find some way to hold our practice, hold how we are, with generosity, with kindness, with compassion, with... Uh, ease and just kind of okay not not having a high standard not trying too hard not berating ourselves but kind of delight in just the capacity to be aware or appreciate the value of being real or or value yes now you can be more careful 
and not make mistakes in what you say or do, that somehow it feels inviting and satisfying to be connected and present. So the effort to be starts being more continuous. You want to do this. You want to do this. It's maybe a little bit like, um, you know, if you play sports or a game or musical instrument, um, you know, if you really enjoy what you're doing, the effort to play the, to do the activity, um, you know, it's, it's, there's no, there's no active, it's not like a work, you have to do it. It's more like, now I get to play and we kind of get absorbed or lost in the experience because we're so delighted by it. It is possible to have that kind of approach with meditation. It takes a while to build it up, but in order to build it up, there has to be some joy, some delight, some, however small it might be, or some appreciation, oh, this is good to be here. That doesn't come quickly in meditation practice. Sometimes it takes months and maybe some years to really get a lot of the you know, deep, deep appreciation. Of, oh, this is home. This is a good place to be. But the continuity of effort is bringing us to uh, towards that place. And one of the ways to practice the effort to make to get there can be kind of maybe all of it can be held underneath the the expression relaxed persistence. Persistence by itself, the word, might lend itself to striving and pushing and straining. But relaxed persistence the relaxed part by itself might lead, lead to complacency or sleepiness or dullness. But these two together, relaxed persistence, and um, they support each other. Uh, making effort, but uh, staying calm while making the effort. So um, we make the initial effort to keep showing up. And that's something that even experienced meditators are still doing because the mind is changeable and all that. So sometimes we're just doing the effort to show up, to start again, to start again. And then as we connect to what's happening, then there can be this right endeavor. We can find our bearings, understand how to be present, how to meditate in a way that's supportive. And making those adjustments the effort to make adjustments that are supportive and helpful. At some point, we don't want to make too many adjustments because then we just keep agitated. We're making the adjustments that lead to greater calm and subtleness. And then as we settle in, then uh, to have some dedication or some effort, okay, now let's see if I can stay here. Let me stay open. Let me stay receptive. Let me stay connected. Let me stay tethered to the moment or tethered to the breath in a nice way. Um, a wonderful uh, image that I used many years ago for myself and my practice to help me with this continuity of attention to my breathing that um, kind of provided for me kind of something like the right tension or tautness uh, be, uh, and this balance between relaxation and persistence was I'd imagine, I would imagine that um, uh, I was flying a kite and in my maybe not comp my understanding of flying a kite is that if there's a strong wind you want to uh, loosen up the string so it's not too much tension on it and let it go a little bit and that, but if there's uh, less wind you want to pull it in so there's a little bit of air pressure against it to hold it up. So in this, if that's accurate enough, that was how I saw it for myself, that um, as I was breathing, I wanted to keep just the right tautness between the attention and the breathing, just to write the, the, the string of attention right there. And sometimes I would uh, uh, let it out a little bit more and let the breathing kind of you know, be a little more free as I was aware of it. And other times I'd bring it closer and feel it. And I was kind of, you know, with the oscillation of breathing in and breathing out, this idea there was a string and I was keeping that attention there and moving with it back and forth was one of the many ways that I've cultivated continuity of awareness through time. 
So, as you go by about your daily life today, uh, you might see if, uh, what joy, delight, what, what's great about, if you can just stay aware, stay receptive, stay attentive in a more continuous way. Maybe uh, start with uh, 30 seconds at a time. And maybe you can uh, increase to one minute or two minutes. Don't set up too high standards, but just uh, see what the benefits come from that and what goes on. So thank you very, very much. And and I look forward to coming down here to IMC and and sitting here alone with all of you. Um, So until tomorrow, be well. Thank you.